Uh, I just woke up one day with swollen ankles in 1985, and I, at the time, was looking uh, for my first post-college job, and I uh, woke up, and both my ankles were swollen. I was, you know, 22 years old, and thought, how odd, you know, and uh, that's weird, and just went about my day because they, they didn't hurt. It became apparent that I would need a transplant, and uh, so rather than even preparing for dialysis, I went straight to transplant from my brother, who was a good match, uh, my oldest brother, Jim. Unfortunately, I got the initial condition, which is focal sclerosing glomerular sclerosis, um, FSGS, and uh, it's a type of thing that um, can reoccur in subsequent transplants. And it does look like it's still active in my body, so I'm not on the transplant list. And, and it was uh, September of 1990 that I started dialysis. Uh, so now it's been uh, going into the 17th year, and uh, I had my uh, fistula created in May of 90, and that's lasted this whole time as well. For 11 years, I dialyzed in center, and I, did, and I did well. I mean, when you're in center, you have to follow their schedule. I mean, you have to come in when they need you to come in. I joined the Carpenters Union in January of 95. Once I started working through the Carpenters Union, not only did I get insurance, I got a paycheck. Started off, it's it's called a trade show specialist. We make signs uh, electronically on these big, wide format printers, and then we have to laminate them, um, you know, mount them onto some kind of material, foam core or uh, Sintra, you know, different materials for signs. And so we're we're making all those big signs and banners that you see at a at a trade show. The other part of my job is uh, it's called computer aided design. It is an architectural program to lay out of the the floor plan of a show. Um, travel is a, a, a priority in my life. I you know, drive a used car, I don't spend a lot of money on other things, but I, I save my, my money for travel. And, and, uh, but one of the things I learned was that uh, going to a new unit is someone else putting in the needles um, was uh, very disconcerting. So that really motivated me to learn to put in my own needles and, uh, and the staff encouraged me. And finally in 99, I decided to take the big trip uh, the trip I always wanted to do, which was a around-the-world trip. And so I, in fact, did go around the world on dialysis and starting in Europe and dialyzing in uh, Monte Carlo and Amsterdam and then meeting my mom in uh, South Africa for two weeks and then going from South Africa to Perth, uh, Australia, which is a really a remote place on the earth. I've visited 29 countries since starting dialysis, and I think I've actually dialyzed in 20. When I travel, they don't know me any more than I know them. But if I come into the unit and I'm putting in my own needles and I, I'm knowledgeable about the process and knowledgeable about the machine, um, it identifies me to the staff that I am engaged in the process. And I do uh, want to be a part of it, and, and that's how I'm treated. Even in center, I was, I was doing well. But I was still nauseous a couple times a month, and uh, you don't really realize what sort of energy level you have because you've lost your yardstick to measure health, your health again. So it was 2001 when the Northwest Kidney Center is in the board and we had decided that it was important to offer more frequent dialysis at a board level. And I thought, well, I should walk the walk if I'm going to talk the talk. And I'm now using a machine that is transportable. And uh, I took my first trip with this machine, the, the Next Stage System 1 Cycler, in August of... Uh, 2006 so um, I'm not really geared up for a road trip but I, I rented a van and loaded all the supplies in and my dog and I uh, drove to Chicago via Yellowstone and the Shoshone National Forest with these new machines just that are specifically made for home dialysis I mean they're really you know are well thought out and they, and they are made for the average person to use and in fact the average person can really you know be trained to use it you know, in a reasonable amount of time. So one of the, the differences uh, that's most apparent to someone uh, switching from in-center dialysis to home dialysis and more frequent dialysis is the change in diet. So it was more, mostly just thinking that I had to avoid fruits and vegetables or um, avoid nuts. And it was all about um, things I couldn't have. And I think that's kind of how I saw it as I switched to more frequent dialysis. I, uh, you know, could reintroduce these things to my diet and I didn't have to say no to fruits and I could eat a banana I could I could have some ice cream and uh, and so the diet's just much more liberal and, and the fluid restrictions are much less if you try to go home and, and it is successful it's the best treatment for you 
and it's because you're able to dialyze more frequently and it, and it and it's really allowing you to to live the life you were meant to live um but incorporating dialysis is a part of that and it's just going to be easier to do at home so um i think it's important to give it a try don't don't sell yourself short